Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Welcome to Flat Earth School. The school is around us 24-7 since the beginning of existence. I'm Mitchell from Australia, merely a student like the rest of us here in this beautiful, wonderful, amazing Flat Earth School. It is the best teacher anyone could ever hope for. Today we have a, another debunk. This guy, what's his name? <laughs> I don't even know his name. He's not very relevant. He's only relevant, again, because of us flat earthers. Just another anti flat earther. Just another, I wouldn't, I don't know if he's a globe shill. Someone's just shilling for the globe, but it, he has arguments from 2015 that he just cannot get out. Let's get into this. How we know the earth is round. Hi, everyone. Several years ago, I made a video series called Flat Out Wrong, addressing the lunacy that is the Flat Earth movement. Back then, this pseudoscience was considered pretty fringe, even among other science deniers. Creationists laughed at Flat Earthers. Today, it seems to have gained acceptance. More and more people are choosing to reject not just some science, but all science. Basically, acceptance of science is viewed as something that goes against their political views or something like that. Yes, I couldn't agree more. There are a group of extremist religious zealots called glow believers <laughs> who choose to reject all science. They now chant that science doesn't prove things. Couldn't agree with you more, mate. So flat earth has gained popularity a lot. And I figured it was time for me to return to the subject and update the series. Well, obviously, if he's back on the subject to update his series, he's obviously well up to date with the number one globe killer. And obviously, he's going to have to address that because this absolutely unequivocally kills any notion that we have a globe since January 1st, 2021. And obviously, if he is back in the scene and he knows, the flat earth arguments he would know that the number one flat earth proof is the sextant obviously he's going to address that let's see this is flurf pratt flat earth points refuted a thousand times the first point i want to address is of course that there is no evidence supporting the spherical earth model in other words Where's the curvature? Where's the curvature? Show me the curvature. You can't show me the curvature. Flat earthers or flurfs seem to be under the impression that the scientific consensus is something made up by some cabal of devil worshippers in black robes who simply decide what they want people to believe. Uh, scientific consensus? What the hell is that? Science does not require any consensus. It is an empirical method to prove the cause of a natural phenomenon. If you through rigorous experimentation. This guy obviously has no clue what science is. What's the bet he's going to project and claim that Flat Earth doesn't know what science is? That's what they usually do when they don't know themselves. Scientists then unquestioningly promote this dogma. This, of course, is only possible because flurfs are willfully ignorant of how science works. What did I tell you? Projection. We don't know how science works? Yeah, we know the scientific method off by heart, backwards, forwards. We know what is science and what is not science. Obviously, this guy, if he thinks scientific consensus is part of science, yeah, he is a pseudoscience lord, isn't he? In particular, the entire process is completely transparent. Because of this, those of us who actually care about learning don't just know what is known. We also know, or can find out, how it's known, and can, at least in principle, verify it for ourselves. Sometimes that's not that difficult, as we will see here. So how do we know that the Earth is round? Well, there are several ways, and this certainly won't be a complete list. For dramatic reasons, I should probably leave the most obvious one until last, but since Flat Earthers won't watch the entire video and are already posting copy-pasted weapons grade stupid in the comments section. I figured I'd start with the most obvious one. 
Yeah, yeah, feel a bit awkward about saying that. Just go for the ad homs, why don't you? Don't don't give us any proof of your globe. Just go straight for the ad homs. See how it plays out for you. And no, I don't count pictures of the Earth from space. I want to stick to ones that you can actually check for yourself. And most people don't have access to satellites. <laughs> don't worry about satellites. He doesn't count pictures from space as globe proof. Well, at least he can admit that because space is fake, buddy. The air that we breathe around us would fill the space if it were a space to be filled. We are contained. Space is fake. It would violate the second law of thermodynamics. That leaves the most obvious evidence, the horizon. On a flat Earth, you can see arbitrarily far, barring any intervening terrain, mist, or other obstruction, of course. For example, you can easily see across the Atlantic. Of course, in reality, the horizon gets in the way. This is the distance from you where the curvature of the Earth results in points on the surface being obscured. Oh dear. I'm claiming what every single Globern here claims. The Earth curvature is not the horizon, right, not Earth please. curvature. Nathan, this observation looks the same every single day. The weather has nothing to do with it. And every time you see the horizon, you're actually seeing the geometric horizon. We are not going to see the geometric horizon. No one's claiming that we see physical geometry. It's not a visual horizon. And every time you see the horizon, you're actually seeing the geometric horizon. The horizon is the one that you see. It's and the geometric cool. one is the one we don't see, because if we don't see it, it's not a horizon. It's not a visual horizon, but it is So we don't visible. see it, oh, so it's so not a horizon. Not a horizon. <laughs> you are correct. We do not observe geometric horizon. Welcome to Flat Earth. Changed by refraction. Do your eyes always tell geometric truth? The short answer to that last question is no. Looking at the horizon a distance d away from an altitude h, we get a right triangle with the sides r, r plus h, and d. Using Pythagoras' theorem, this gives us d equals the square root of 2rh plus h squared. For small h compared to r, this is well approximated as the square root of 2rh with r equals 6,370 kilometers, in other words, 6,370,000 meters, and h equals two meters, we get d equals 5,048 meters, just a tad over five kilometers. Yeah, and this, I think, <laughs> some introductions are needed. He obviously has no idea what the black swan is and how devastating it is for his globe. Obviously, he's been away from the scene a little bit. All right, well, now it's time to catch up. This is the black swan. Is the number one globe killer hopefully by now all of you have seen this video by bmlsb69 his observer foot height is only one foot now that first platform is 6.2 miles away and platform habitat is 9.4 miles away with the horizon far in the distance beyond that now i'm going to let you just sit there and take this in because this, this is the absolute number one globe killer. Modus Tollens states, if P, then Q, not Q, therefore not P. If P, we live on a globe of radius 3959 miles, then Q, every horizon distance measurement cannot be more than 1.23 miles times the square root of the observer height in feet. Not Q, the Geometric horizon is far greater than 2.73 miles for five foot. Therefore, not P. The Earth is not a globe. Granted, in practice, this distance can be increased by atmospheric refraction, but this relies on favorable weather conditions, and this only applies locally, so you can never see arbitrarily far, which you always can on a flat Earth. Yes, the number one globe killer. It is absolutely devastating. How are we seeing further on a globe Earth? Is it because there is no curvature? Is it because we're going to need the R value, which has been absolutely debunked by the number one globe killer, the black swan? At best, you would have disproved the radius of the earth and that's what we now know after being after globe believers 
know the black swan. This is the response to the number one globe killer. At best, all you've done is disprove the radius of the Earth. Not only does the horizon exist, it behaves exactly as expected, obscuring objects from the bottom up. This was beautifully explained by a drawing found in an astronomy textbook from the 13th century, which also shows that the apparently sunken objects can still be seen from higher altitude. This is why the castle can be seen from the crow's nest, but not from the deck of the ship. But this valid logical conclusion is hand-waved by the globe zealots as word salad. So I'll put this devastating picture in simpler terms. Globe believers must have a physical leading edge, the geographical edge to their sphere, in order for boats to go over it and for land and water to curve around it. It's a fundamental pillar to their religion. You'll notice that in the formula, if you increase h, the altitude from which you are observing the horizon, d will also increase. If the globe they presuppose has a radius of 3959 miles, then the horizon distance is set by the height of the observer. So what makes this image so devastating is the height of the observer at only one foot. The horizon should be 1.22 miles. But even if we set it at five feet, the horizon should be 2.73 miles. But we can see the bottom of platform habitat where it meets the water 9.41 miles away and the horizon above that beyond in the distance, making it fundamentally impossible to see this from one foot on a globe. The existence of the horizon shows that the Earth curves away from you. Uh, no, the existence of the number one globe killer, the black swan, shows the Earth does not curve away from us. The radius has been debunked. And you can also show that using a method that flat earthers used themselves to try to prove that the Earth was flat in the documentary Behind the Curve, with hilarious results. If you're seeing through this hole, through the next hole, and seeing the light at the backboard, or at 17 feet off the water, the Earth is flat. If he's holding it up at 23 feet high and we're seeing the light, well, that's because the Earth's curved. So I, I should only be able to see it when it's at 17 feet. Okay, go ahead and drive down there, Enrique. You're going to hold the light there. Enrique, how high is your light? 17 feet. I mean, I, you know, it's his, um, there's, we don't see you, Enrique. Lift up your, lift up your light way above your head. Interesting. Yes. Interesting indeed. Not a single flurf cared. Uh, yeah, we cared. And then we found the number one globe killer. Where is the curvature for the number one globe killer? Not a single globe cared until they realized how devastating it is for their globe model. You no longer have Earth curvature as a physical thing at the horizon. You no longer have a radius of 3959 miles. The number one globe killer, the black swan, is absolutely devastating to you and your globe. Another version of this experiment uses three poles, A, B, and C, of equal height. A telescope is mounted on A and is aimed at the top of C. Since the Earth is curved, B will appear to be taller than C. These direct observations of the Earth's curvature should be enough to convince anyone that the Earth is curved. Of course, it wouldn't prove that the Earth is a sphere unless we make observations all over the planet, which is quite unreasonable for most people. But if enough flurfs would bother to look at the horizon and notice that they can't see past it and then share that information with other like-minded idiots, they would at least find that the Earth is curved wherever these observations are made, which is perfectly consistent with the Earth being spherical and completely inconsistent with it being flat. Ah, uh, yeah, so obviously... This is the... So obviously, wherever we look at the horizon, wherever we go to see Earth curve, we're going to see things blocked at that physical barrier. You know, 1.22 times the square root of the observer's height and feet. That is the geometric limitation to your edge of your globe, physical Earth curvature. And you've just claimed wherever we see, 
Well, here's another black swan for you, mate. This is from Australia. Australian black swan. This footage was filmed from an observer height of 5.5 feet with a Nikon P900. This is point perpendicular. You can see the lighthouse. And these rocks are just demarcation rocks. This is not the argument. My observer location is here on Collingwood Beach in Jervis Bay on the New South Wales south coast. I was viewing these rocks here near point perpendicular. The distance is 7.8 miles. Now that's not the distance to the horizon. That's just the distance to the bottom of their rocks. Enhancing this image, we can see that there is a mirroring layer below this boat. That's not refraction or a mirage, simply just mirroring. And we can see the bottom of those rocks where it touches the water 7.8 miles away. This is just a demarcation point. Here is the horizon far beyond 7.8 miles. And to put it beyond all doubt that the horizon is far in the distance past those rocks, we're about to see a boat appear from behind those rocks and the horizon still in the distance beyond that boat. The horizon is definitely beyond 7.8 miles from my observer point. From an observer height of 5.5 feet, distance to the horizon can be no more than 1.22 times the square root of 5.5 feet, which equals 2.35 miles. That is where the horizon, the physical earth curvature must be on a sphere of a radius 3959 miles from a 5.5 foot observer height. And we can clearly see the horizon is far beyond 7.8 miles. <laughs> Absolutely devastating for that thing right there, your GLOW model. It seems wherever we look, we're coming up with black swans. And these aren't the only two. That We've got many more. We've got many, many more. And it seems like this guy, he's been out of the loop for so long. He's had his hands over his ears. He's covering his eyes. He doesn't want anything to do with Flat Earth. But now, for some reason, when it is the most devastating time to be a globe believer, he wants to just walk back in. Oh, hey, guys, I'm just going to squirt off some 2015 arguments. Yeah, it's not going to fly here. Your globe has been absolutely demolished. But wait, we have to do this. Why? If the Earth is curved, does the horizon look um, horizontal? I mean, hell, that's even why we call it horizontal. I mean, why is that? Shouldn't it look like this? What a concession right there. Obviously, if he knew about the black swan, if he knew about the number one flat Earth proof, he wouldn't be going around saying things like this. I would like to be gentle to him. But he's just a rude, arrogant <laughs> little Viking. It's simple. For one, because you only observe a small part of a very large sphere. Let's do the actual maths then. Here it is set out for everyone to go over in your own leisure. Using the values of from the black swan image of a one foot observer height and a 10 mile distance horizon, you can clearly see... We have a 264,000 mile radius. But isn't the radius of the sun meant to be 432,000 miles? Oh, no, not anymore. It's got to be bigger now. What about the distance to the moon? 238,000 miles. Nope, that's got to be different too, doesn't it, Mr. Sensible? What else does it implicate? The radiuses of all the planetary orbits have to be different too. You can safely say that each such observable patch is approximately albeit, as we have seen, not perfectly, flat. But there's more to it. Because the Earth is a sphere, it has spherical symmetry. It's a Duh. sphere? It's got spherical symmetry? Well, you're going to need R for that, aren't you? Something that is going to be keep coming up because you don't even realise how devastating the black swan is. We're just going to have to drum it into his head. You're going to need R for that.
That means if you look parallel with sea level in any direction, tangent to the sphere, that is, the vertical distance between your eye level and the horizon will be the same in every direction, meaning the horizon must be horizontal. In order to see the horizon being anything but horizontal, you have to be looking down on Earth, radially in, that is, rather than just tangentially. This is why the horizon becomes visible from high altitude, where you are clearly looking down at the horizon. That is, you see this curve. Uh, kind of like this curve here. The left image there, that's the original black swan. And the right image there, that's the updated black swan. And as you're going to see here, let's see where the horizon is. There it is. That's even more devastating. October 29th, 2021, from the channel BMLSB69. He has given us the updated black swan. This line right here on the left, that's where the original horizon was visible. On the right hand image, that's where the horizon is now visible from. It is far in the distance from 10 miles. And obviously, <laughs> that is so devastating for your globe. The horizon. It is visible from all altitudes. We only have one horizon. You can't see the higher you go, you're going to see a different horizon. No, it is the same horizon. It's just not physical earth curve to block the bottom of buildings, obstruct things physically, or make boats disappear bottom up. The black swan. Absolutely not devastating. This curve. Next, we have another observation that I guarantee that every flat earther has made. On occasion, the sun sets. Now, couple this. What? On occasion, uh, obviously, that's sarcasm. And obviously, he's trying to poke fun at flat earthers because what sunsets don't happen on a flat earth? No. Apparently, you haven't been keeping up with the flat earth debate. I recommend you go and subscribe to Nathan Oakley, 1980. And if you're ballsy enough, go and join the live hangout with the fact that even flurfs in other parts of the world won't agree when this happens. We have time zones, and it's clear that the Earth can't possibly be flat. It must be curved. Yeah, you're going to need all for that. Otherwise, the sun would be visible either to everyone at once or to no one, because it would be either above or below the Earth. Uh, what? You can see he's obviously building a nice straw man to burn. This is his only argument he has. He doesn't actually know our flat earth arguments. He doesn't know the black swan. He doesn't know the sexton. So we have to just show everyone what he's trying to do. These are 2015 arguments. No, we do not claim that we live on a model, the AE map. This is just a cartoon. We don't live on a model. What we observe. In reality, that's where we actually live. The black swan, it is from reality. It is not a map. It is not a model. We live here on our beautiful flat earth school. It is measurably, observably, and navigatably flat. Flurfs typically claim that the sun is moving in a circle above the disc-shaped earth, illuminating the area beneath it. They say it appears to... Flurfs typically claim so now another stereotyping fallacy. This guy has just got all the fallacies. Set because of perspective. It appears to get closer and closer to the horizon the farther away it goes. Beautiful, beautiful video by D-I-T-R-H. That is the sun fade out there. And I had to upload this video in two parts. So that was the first part. And I think this guy's name is Marty or something like that. Doesn't really matter. He's just going to be another demolished globy by the end of this. All right, this is the second part of his video. Let's get back into it. Yes, this would be true. 
but it would also become visibly smaller. And again, it would never set. So this excuse only makes the model easier to falsify. Uh, what? It would never set. So what, the sun would just get smaller? What is the sun? Do we have a physical size of the sun? No, all we have is apparent size, apparent location, apparent distance. You've got a physical assumption bias, which leads you to the incorrect conclusion. It would only reach the horizon at infinite distance, at which point it would also be infinitely small. And since it remains above the supposedly disc-shaped Earth at all times, that obviously won't happen, because the Earth is not of infinite size. You can see what he's doing. All he wants to do is build up this straw man to burn. He doesn't know the real flat earth arguments. He doesn't know the black swan, the sexton arguments. All he's got is this image that he Googled, flat earth. Oh, look, this is where they think they live. Oh, I'm going to burn that straw man. In fact, assuming that the sun is at a height of 3,000 miles or 5,000 kilometers, as they usually claim, when the sun is above the Tropic of Capricorn, from the opposite edge of the supposed disk, it would be 8.7 degrees above the horizon at midnight. That's fine, you might think, as you would expect midnight sun in the Antarctic at this point. But the problem is that at the same time, it would be 22 degrees above the horizon at the North Pole, where it shouldn't rise at all. 8.7 degrees is as low as the sun could possibly be, according to the standard Flerth model, ever. According to the standard Flerth model, well, News for you again, mate. We don't have a standard Flerth model. This is a straw man. We do not claim we live on the AE map. And we do not claim we have a, so a height or a size of our sun. That is another straw man. You can see what he's doing straight away. But on the globe side, you absolutely have a claim of the size and distance to your sun. Do you even know on the heliocentric model how you got your size and distance to your sun? Firstly, you assumed that you were on a globe. You begged the question. It has never, ever been proven. Secondly, you claimed that that light in the sky, Venus, was exactly the same size as Earth. And they were both spherical objects with a radius 39, 59 miles. What an extrapolation you can make from just looking at a light in the sky. And then we saw Venus transiting the sun. And because you thought that you know the size of Venus, you timed how long it took for the transit of Venus across the sun and using Kepler's third law of interplanetary motion, you then derived a size of the sun. And from the size of the sun, from all these assumptions, from all these logical fallacies begging the question, you then got the distance of 93 million miles. Yeah. That's your narrative. That's not a straw man. That's the actual narrative of the globe. Stop building up a straw man and burning it. This is not what we're claiming here on screen. This is obviously inconsistent with what we actually observe. This observation cannot be made on a flat Earth unless the sun is here, in which case it would appear to set as seen by everyone on the disk. The fact that the sun sets at different times at different longitudes shows that the Earth is round. Any evidence of the R value? Earth radius. You're going to need R for that. You're going to need R for that. Yeah, every time he says the Earth is round, the Earth is a globe, you're going to need R for that. And we're just going to have to keep drumming it into his head because he doesn't have the R value anymore. Black Swan is a bitch. Of course, the same is true for all other celestial objects as well. On a flat Earth, every star should be either visible to everyone or to no one at a given point in time. Instead, what we see is that different stars are visible from different locations. This is because the Earth itself blocks most of the sky from any given location. You're going to need off for that. This is why. So the Earth itself blocks the sky in any given location. Yeah, thanks, Neil. You're going to need off for that if you're claiming it's a globe. The globe has no radius. There is no radius attainable from looking at observations in reality. That's what the black swan is. There is no physical blockage of anything due to the physical earth curve.
There is no sphere getting in the way. There is no curvature getting in the way. It is all purely perspective. Why, for example, it's impossible for me here in Sweden to see the Southern Cross. And it's similarly impossible for someone in South Africa to see the Big Dipper. This would not be the case on a flat Earth. Uh, what? <laughs> this would not be the case on a flat Earth. So obviously he's using the straw man again. He's using it in false dichotomy. He's holding them both up, the AE map, compared to the globe model. And he's saying, which one would be more accurate? Which one works better? Well, neither of them. That's why it's a false dichotomy. You're only giving us two options. There is a third option. Reality does not claim models, does not need imagination. We just use reality. That's all we need. Another related problem for flat earthers is the convergence of paths on both hemispheres. Where exactly is the Southern Cross? It's one constellation, which is due south of Chile, due south of South Africa, and due south of Australia, which, contrary to what some flurfs claim, exists. Yes, there are flurfs who claim that Australia doesn't exist. You can see, it's very apparent now. All his arguments are from 2015. He still thinks there's people that believe or not believe that Australia exists. He's still bringing this to the table. No, mate, you are sorely mistaken. Obviously, my name is Mitchell from Australia. I've lived here my whole life. We do not claim that Australia does not exist. That was just propaganda to make flat earthers seem not intelligent. Do some research. You need to disprove the black swan. And then, when you've had a go at the black swan, have a go at the sexton, the number one flat earth proof, your arguments that you're bringing to the table here with your big grin on your face, you silly little Viking, are absolutely not even relevant anymore. But I'll get back to that later. What this means is that due south is not radially out, as flurfs typically believe, but rather the direction toward the south pole, a single point. A single point towards that the south pole. That I'll just go back to that image. Holding these two things up in false dichotomy yet again. Look at this. Just building up that false dichotomy. These are the only two options that we have, apparently. A flat Earth with uh, the same stars just visible in... No, no. We don't have that, mate. We would never see the Southern Cross anywhere but in the same location. It's dark over at... South America there when it's light in Australia. You're not going to see the Southern Cross in two places at once. It's going to be dark over one side. It's going to be light over one side. He's just building up this false dichotomy so he can say that, look, this works on a globe, so we must have a globe. Do you think by us not being able to explain why we see this means that we don't see this? These are very, very basic arguments. You must first think that you are looking antipodal when you're in the south compared to the north. And yeah, you're going to need R for that. You're begging the question that we're living on a sphere. That proves that the surface of the earth is what's called a geometrically closed surface, like the surface of a sphere. This doesn't just disprove the standard flurf map with the North Pole at the center, but literally all flat Earth models, because the closed surface is, by definition, not flat. The fact that you can see different celestial objects, depending on where you are, is easy to verify. Just talk to people who live in other parts of the world. You can even talk to your fellow FLURF morons. A great way to see how the Earth is curved. Yeah, just, just continue with the ad homs because your argument's as weak as piss. Well, you're going to need R for that. Look at Polaris. A great way to see how the Earth is curved. Well, you're going to need R for that. Look at Polaris. Get your FLURF buddies who live directly north or south of you to help out. Measure the elevation of Polaris. You'll find that your observations completely contradict the Earth being flat. Measure. The elevation of Polaris. 
Well, what is the angle of elevation? What does it actually mean? From mathisfun.com, definitions, angle of elevation, the upward angle from the horizontal to a line of sight from the observer to some point of interest. Yeah, you need that horizontal, that thing that you disclosed. We absolutely see. It looks flat all the time, doesn't it? Angle of elevation from Merriam-Webster, the angle formed by the line of sight and the horizontal plane for an object above the horizontal. This is how we get angles to things like Polaris. You need that horizontal plane. Absolutely debunking that we have any curvature. Angles are not attainable on a curved surface. Elevation angle, down the bottom there, is the angle between the horizontal plane and the line of sight measured in the vertical plane. You cannot attain any angles on a curved surface. If you were following the flat earth debate, you would know that the sextant, the angle measuring device, is the number one flat earth proof. You cannot use a sextant, an angle measuring device, to measure something like Polaris, how you've just mentioned that. How are we measuring an angle to Polaris on a curved surface? No, we're measuring it on a flat plane. The angle of elevation absolutely needs a horizontal plane. And one observer is at the North Pole and another is at the equator during equinox. In that case, the first observer will see Polaris directly above an elevation of 90 degrees. The second will see it precisely on the horizon, an elevation of zero degrees. This is, of course, because the observers are tilting 90 degrees relative to each other, because the Earth is round. Uh, you're going to need half of that. Let's keep looking at celestial objects. We all know what the moon looks like. Interestingly, we can disprove the FLIRF snow globe model of the Earth by looking at the moon from different locations. Its face is always the same. On the standard flat Earth, these two observers would be looking at the moon from different sides, so it would not look the same to them. This means that if the Earth is flat, the moon is not moving in a circle above it, as FLIRFs typically believe. Ah, uh, FLIRFs typical belief? No. Straw man again, stereotyping fallacy again. All you've got is fallacious logic. And you can see why he's trying to build up this straw man because it's the only argument he has. It's the only thing that he thinks is relevant in Flat Earth. He thinks that we are pushing this model, that we are living on this model. No, we are not pushing that we live here on this straw man model, mate. Get your head out of the 2015 gutter and come to us, learn some things, do some research, catch up on the flat earth debate, and you'll realize that these arguments, <laughs> they have no standing here in the flat earth debate as it is. This is very embarrassing for yourself. But what's more interesting, and actually shows that the earth is in fact round, but you're going to need half of that, is that the moon appears to tilt at different angles for different observers. This is most obvious during first and third quarter, when half the moon is dark. From here in Sweden, the terminator, the line between the light and dark side, appears practically vertical. But when I'm on vacation down by the Mediterranean, it's clearly not. This is because as I move south, I tilt more and more compared to what I'm used to. Here's what the moon looks like as seen from Sweden, Italy, Cameroon, and South Africa at the same time. And here's why. While on the subject of the moon, during a lunar eclipse, the sun, the earth, and the moon form a straight line. So the earth's shadow falls on the moon. Ah, oh, so not a spotlight sun, not uh, parallel lines coming in to form those parallel rays. The thing that the globe believers are saying needed for the sextant. So thanks for confirming that we do not have parallel light rays in your heliocentric model. And this is what you think is happening. You think that we have a sphere. We're well, going to need R for that. You think that we have three spheres. You're going to need three R's for that. But at the first basis, you're going to need the R for the Earth, the thing that the black swan has absolutely demolished. That's why every time you say that happens on a curved Earth, that happens on a globe Earth, assuming, begging the question, you're going to need R for that. This is why lunar eclipses only occur during full moon. And on a related note, it's also why solar eclipses only occur during new moon. 
when the moon is in front of the Earth instead. And before some flurf says that this isn't how eclipses work, yes, it is. Not only do we know how to explain eclipses. In fact, we can just we can just barely make out a little bit of the moon left. It's about two thirds away covered with Earth's shadow, and it's turning a sort of pale orange, pinkish color. But with the bright morning sun coming up, there's not much. Not enough contrast to be able to see the moon there. We can still see it just a little bit. What I find very interesting is I was expecting the shadow to come upward across the moon as it would go down and it would pass into shadow. And Before he goes into his explanation, because they can easily explain what's going on here, this is a solar and Indian eclipse where the moon is being eclipsed, but the sun is also above the horizon, something that you cannot explain in your heliocentric model. You can definitely not explain eclipses with the heliocentric model but this <laughs> what we were just about to go into this this bit of diatribe from this bloke here he's trying to describe what's going on and actually it's going the other way around the shadow this moon is here the shadow is creeping down across the moon even though the sun's coming up over here and that must be because of the moon's rotation around the earth it's moving farther up even though the sun's light <laughs> <laughs> it's actually coming from over there. It's actually coming underneath the Earth. So if you imagine the sun is here, the Earth is here, and the moon is back here, and this light was coming under the Earth, but the moon must be rotating around even though we're turning, so it looks like the moon is going down. It's kind of an optical illusion. It's pretty cool. <laughs> that was painful to watch. Thanks for explaining to that. Yeah, absolutely. You guys can explain it so easily. And then when you see a solid eclipse, that's what happens. You have to do that mental, <laughs> those mental cognitive dissonance. It is mentally painful for you guys to try to explain something like a solar linear eclipse does not happen on a heliocentric model. We know how to use this understanding to predict them, something you can't do. Well, this is the Antikytheria device, mate. Something that has been around for thousands of years. We can absolutely predict all the phases of the moon, all the eclipses, all the celestial body movements. This is something that predates any notion of the globe. The globe notion has not been around for very long. It is just a conspiracy theory that has been around for maybe a couple of decades. Yeah, some people say that it was around for thousands of years. No, this Antikytheria device. This predates the globe. This has no consideration for curvature or a globe at all. We can absolutely predict the cycles of these things in the celestial plane. All the celestial bodies are, is a clock. The sun is for the days. The moon is for the months. The stars are for the years. We don't need to claim that we're on a flat earth. We don't need to claim that we're on a globe earth. These things happen and they never not happen. They are cycles, but they absolutely don't work on a globe. Until you have a model with greater predictive power, I suggest you shut up. <laughs> Just more ad homs. He suggests that we shut up. Yeah, it's because what we say is so devastating. You have to insert the ad homs. You have to build up the straw men. You have to beg the question because your arguments are so weak and our arguments are so devastating. Now, this guy, I was going to go easy on him, but he has just proven that he is just a pathetic little Viking acting like he's got some sort of authority. He's clinging to his begging the question fallacy of a globe. He's mindlessly parroting what people were saying back in 2015. This is 2021, mate. Get your head out of that gutter of 2015. Do some actual research. I know it's going to be painful for you to see what the black swan is, to see what the number one flat earth proof is. But here's an idea for you. Subscribe to Nathan Oakley 1980. Join his panel. Have a bit of a debate because you're so arrogant and you're so sure of your globe model. See how that goes for you. See if you can match it with our best. Bring along your 2015 arguments and see how you go, mate.
As the ancient Greeks who understood this noticed, the Earth's shadow on the moon is round because the Earth is a sphere. I can just say, you're going to need R for that. I have one more thing to say about the sky, and then we'll get back down to Earth. If you look at how celestial objects move in the sky, you'll notice that on the northern hemisphere, they move counterclockwise around Polaris, and on the southern hemisphere, they move clockwise around a point near Sigma Tantus. This is obviously because the two hemispheres are upside down relative to each other, because the Earth is round. You're going to need R for that. And yes, of course, this is actually because the Earth rotates, but that's a subject for another time. Flurfs love to change the subject and talk about how the Earth isn't spinning or how gravity doesn't exist. And we'll get to those things. Uh, well, you just brought it up. So we'll get to those things right now. Show us an observation here on Earth of Earth spinning. Yeah, just hand wave them away like you already know. Just beg the question of gravity. Beg the question of Earth spinning. Both of those things have no scientific validity. Both of those things can never be observed. That's why you just want to hand wave them away. Because we do not have these things in reality. There is no gravity. It's relative density disequilibrium. Another thing you're going to have to do your research on. And we do not have Earth rotation. Something that is never, ever observed from here on Earth. But they have nothing to do with a discussion of the shape of the Earth. And that's what we're talking about here. Okay, getting back down to Earth. Any world map is a projection of a spherical surface onto a plane. When you project a spherical surface onto a plane... Ah, uh, no. All maps are made from the flat plane that we dwell upon. All measurements from something like a total station or a, a theater light, they're all flat measurements with the flat baseline. So it's not the sphere projected onto a flat surface. No, we measure all maps in the first instance as flat. All maps that we use for navigation and the layout of the land, they're all flat earth maps. They only work on a flat earth. So they first measure it as flat. And then if you think you believe you're living on a sphere, you wrap that flat earth map onto a globe. And then, after it's on the globe, they put it back onto the flat Earth map, and that's why it's so distorted. There is layers and layers of deception at work here. He's got it absolutely backwards. We don't start with a globe and then put it onto flat. No, we start with flat. They put it onto a globe, and then they put it back onto flat, and it's distorted as hell. You distort it. That means you get an inconsistent scale. Flurfs tend to believe that the North Pole is at the center of the disc-shaped Earth and the South Pole is actually its circumference rather than a point. This means that they are projecting the surface in such a way that east-west distances are stretched out more and more the farther south you go, reaching infinite distortion at the South Pole. The projection algorithm used is called azimuthal equidistant projection. There it is, the projection used. Yeah. This is the straw man that he has to keep building up and keep burning because he doesn't have any arguments. Projection of a sphere flattened into a flat earth map? No. Why would anyone claim that's where we live? We don't have any distances on this map because that's not what it's even used for. This map here was only derived from, yeah, not only the globe, but the sun's position relative to an observer point, something that will go way over your head. So we won't get into it today, but this is why he has to keep building up that straw man to burn the shit off. No other arguments. Flight times, however, which are easily checked, are consistent with the actual distances and not the projected ones. For example, on the Flurf's favorite map, the distance between Cape Town and Johannesburg is significantly greater than that between London and Stockholm. I'd say it's about twice as long. This guy is stuck in a Groundhog Day loop of 2015. Look, what you're going to have to do is go to my channel, look at the number one globe killer. That is the black swan. Once you're familiar with that, go to the second video, the number one flat earth proof. You need to learn the 2021 arguments and you need to have a crack at them. Come back at us when you can do that. The former direct flight takes two hours, the latter takes 
This is consistent with the real distances, 1,240 kilometers and 1,450 kilometers, respectively. Another obvious example is LA to New York compared to Perth to Sydney. The distances are roughly comparable, 3,800 kilometers and 3,200 kilometers, as are the flight times, about 5.30 and 4.10, even though the latter, which is actually shorter, looks to be far longer on the azimuthal equidistant map. Now, of course, flat earthers will say that these flight times are bogus and, again, that Australia doesn't exist. This is one of the main reasons why they can't accept the existence of Australia. It simply stretches out so far in the east-west direction that it becomes a problem for their model, and they have to deny its existence because of that. Like I said, he's stuck in Groundhog Day of 2015. Pull yourself out of that <laughs> infinite regression that you've found yourself in getting into 2021, and then you'll see, you want to talk about flight times. Well, let's talk about flight times on a globe. If the globe was spinning at 1,000 miles per hour on the equator, flight times would be drastically reduced depending on the direction that you go. If the Earth's rotation were actually real, we would experience shorter flight times for something like going from Charlotte, North Carolina, to LA. You travel at 500 miles per hour, it would only take 1.5 hours. What do we see in reality? It takes 4.5 hours because there is no Coriolis ever observed. We can even put this into a logical consistency, something that you failed to do this entire video. You have logical flaws in everything that you say. So let's teach him what a logical consistency is. Modus tollens. If P, then Q, not Q, therefore not P. If P, the Earth rotates at 1,000 miles per hour at the equator, then Q, flights from Charlotte, North Carolina to LA would take 1.5 hours. Not Q, the flight time takes four and a half hours, therefore not P. It is not a spinning globe of 1,000 miles per hour rotation speed. That is a logical consistency. Try and even <laughs> give us something that not only makes sense, that is coherent, that is a sequitur conversation, but try to keep out of logical fallacies. Unfortunately for flurfs, people who take these flights can compare the posted flight times against the actual flight time. Yeah, unfortunately for Globers, we can actually yeah, compare the actual flight times compared to what you would expect to see if there were Coriolis, expect to see if we did have an Earth rotation. And it is very embarrassing when we put these logical consistencies to the globe, Earthers. Where do they go from here? Maybe the air is in lockstep with the Earth as it rotates. No, that violates all gas laws. You don't want to go there, buddy. Closely related to this is the issue of flight paths. On a flat Earth, the shortest distance between any two points is always a straight line. On a spherical Earth, it's a great circle arc. You're gonna need R for that. Which only looks like a straight line if viewed from directly above. If you actually look at the paths taken by airliners, you'll see that they fly in curved trajectories consistent with great circles. Uh, no. <laughs> this isn't a map that shows that they fly in curved arcs like that. It is the distortion due to the map. You draw a line from where that plane is landing there in the middle of the screen right here. Draw a line here, start that starting point on a map, and then put it over to somewhere in Russia. It'll go straight up and straight down. <laughs> yeah? Is that what happens on your maps? Is he not going to see a curve? Look at this. He's even drawn that in. What a load of crap. Yeah, these curved flight paths are only due to the distortion. Like we talked about before, we measure the layout of the Earth as flat. They project that onto the globe, and then they project it back onto a flat map. And that's why we see all this distortion, especially in the north. Art. Yes, this path is shorter and thus faster and more fuel efficient than this path, which only looks shorter on this flat projection of the Earth's spherical surface. On the FLIRF's favorite map, this leads to ridiculous extremes on the southern hemisphere. In particular, the flight from LA to Sydney 
Yes, Australia exists. Should go northwest rather than southwest. Once again, we see what a problem Australia is for flurfs. So to sum up, by looking... The only problem that Australia is, is not for flirts, it's for the globe. They got people like me at your heels every single day. I run a stream called Flat Earth School. It is a school that is around us 24 seven since the beginning of existence. That is the biggest problem that you guys have to seem to have at the moment. There are so many people coming at me. I have, am notorious for getting globe trolls in my chat. Globe trolls making videos against me. That's the only, that's the only problem. It is on the globe side, not on the flat, flat earth side. Australia is a big problem for you guys because I'm at your heels daily. Looking at the horizon by looking at the sky or by navigating over large distances or performing some pretty simple experiments. Yeah. Whoa, 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 whoa. Experiments, you say. Finally, we're going to get into science. So obviously, he knows that the scientific method is, step one, observe a natural phenomenon. And it has to be natural. If it's synthetic or man-made, there is no scientific inquiry necessary. If it is not natural, you know the cause. It's going to be man-made. Step two, formulate a valid hypothesis. You're going to have to postulate the cause to that natural phenomenon that's what the hypothesis is predicting the cause to that naturally occurring phenomenon and the cause the iv the independent variable has to be something that the researcher can manipulate it has to be something that exists and it has to be the cause it has to meet those three criteria to be a viable hypothesis and then we can get into experiments as you've just said so once you can give us some of that for the globe put anything that we see in reality through the scientific model for the globe get back to us and obviously we're going to rip it apart because the globe has no scientific validity nothing from the globe has been put through the scientific model and been experimented on it does not even get to the experiment stage we can all verify that the earth is a sphere uh, you're going to need half of that. Or at the very least, not flat. Yeah, it definitely is flat, as per the number one flat earth proof, the sextant. We won't get into it today. I think he has to catch up a bit on the black swan first before he gets into the advanced arguments of why we have physically measured the earth as flat. What this means is, I think it's safe to say that there's no such thing as an honest flat earther. <laughs> this is important. Flat earthers are not just misinformed and ignorant. That's only part of it. Most importantly, they are willfully stupid. And it's always been my clear impression that this whole thing has more to do with politics than with the shape of the earth. They associate acceptance of science with submission to a perceived tyrannical authority. A secular liberal intellectual elite they refer to as NASA which is actually just the American Space Administration. Now, this is typically, but not necessarily, the same authority Fox News calls the radical left, which also accepts evolution, anthropogenic climate change, the safety and efficacy of vaccines, and so on. In short, science. So it's a conspiracy theory. That's it. Let's get this straight. Science is completely apolitical. It only becomes political when politicians politicize it because they don't like what it has to say. What this means is that there's really no point trying to convince a flurf that the Earth is round. They already know it is, and this has been confirmed by people who have left the cult. <sighs> what a big string of, string of ad homs and projection. Projection is projecting one's own shitty, shallow qualities onto your opponents. That's what you have. You have already convinced yourself that you live on a globe. Yeah? How have you done that? You need to not only convince yourself. If you're on YouTube, you need to convince everyone else. You have no globe proof. You think that you're on a spinning space monkey ball. You need to prove it without begging the question, without logical flaws 
fallacious logic of begging the question. You can't start with the premise that you're already on a globe if you're trying to prove that you're on a globe. You can't use a false dichotomy holding up a globe model and an AE map and saying which one of these is true or truer or works better in reality. None of them. Both of those things do not work in reality. You have to actually use reality. Stop using fallacious logic. Stop using begging the questions, false dichotomies, straw men, ad homs. Get out into nature. Get into the beautiful flat earth school around you. And you will see, if you're honest, you'll come to the conclusion that we are on a stationary, enclosed, <laughs> flat plane. It is measurable. It is navigatable. It is being proven beyond all doubt. And yes, that's what it is, a cult. What they tend to say is that the Earth being flat was something they believed in their hearts and not in their brains. That means flat earthers don't actually believe the Earth is flat. They are simply devoted to the idea. And since their understanding of epistemology is on par with their understanding of science, they can't see the difference. Or projection about belief, because if you're believing that you're on a globe, that's all you've got. Belief, imagination. We don't need belief. We don't need imagination being flat earthers. My stream is called Flat Earth School because it is, it is around us 24-7 since the beginning of existence. It uses reality to tell you where you live to tell you the layout of the land, to tell you how our world works. We don't need to believe. We just use reality, something that you fail to do in every step of proving your globe. Like I said, you beg the question. You already think you're living on a globe. Get out into reality. See a black swan for yourself. See that observation of a... Try and, just try and find the curvature. Try and find a picture or image of something being blocked bottom up and then ask yourself, why did we see that black swan in the first instance? If you think something's being uh, blocked bottom up by a physical earth curvature, look at the black swan. It doesn't just magically become earth curvature again. It has been debunked. That is why it is the number one globe killer. Once proven, that we do not see physical geometric curvature. It has always been proven we do not see physical geometric curvature. You cannot give us a white swan and say, look, this is being blocked by physical earth curvature, black swan. You can never ever go back to seeing physical earth curvature. That's why the globe is a cult. They mindlessly parrot the same things over and over. In this guy's instance, he's been so involved in the cult of the globe that he fails to see anything past 2015 arguments. It is very telling. And you are not relevant in this discussion at all. This is why flat earthers will respond to criticism with hostility. They are not interested in whether they are right or wrong. They already know they're wrong. Criticism of the idea is an attack on something they are devoted to something they love. Effectively, they love to be wrong. See ya. Yes, this would be. Says a bloke that was wrong in every step of the way. I hope you enjoyed this presentation today. Absolutely debunked this bloke. I think his name was Marty. I don't know. He has 40,000 subscribers. This video of his has had about 10,000 comments. Uh, sorry, 10,000 views. Go and leave some cool flat earth comments on it. Tell him Mitchell from Australia sent you and tell him your globe has been absolutely debunked. I hope you like this presentation. Please smash the super chat. I haven't been following the chat. If there was some super chats, I apologize. I haven't been seeing them. If you like my work, please sign up to Patreon. Send me some PayPal uh, love. Uh, buy my wife's book if you, th if you need some advice and some knowledge on pregnancy. It's called ABC Pregnancy. Everything about just naturally being pregnant, naturally birthing, something that's not a medical emergency. But guys, thank you for sticking around. It was a bit of a delayed stream today. I appreciate it. Um, all the all the kind comments, all the, <laughs> yeah.
33 likes. That's great, isn't it? Go over to Quantum Eraser channel right now. I think he's got a live stream. Quantum Eraser channel, like and subscribe. He's got a live stream going on right now. If the world feels, if you feel like the world turns on you, turn to Flatter School. It's around you 24 7. Since the beginning of existence, I'm Mitchell from Australia. He's been absolutely debunked, whatever his name is. He's, he's not relevant. You globe trolls, you're not relevant. Until next time, get out and experience your beautiful flat earth school because that's what it is. Beautiful, flat, and a school. It is the best teacher anyone could ever hope for. See you guys.